Stacks and queues are both incredibly important data structures. They are different types of collections that can only be accessed in a certain way. Whereas arrays and linked lists offer different ways of implementing a collection in terms of how the memory is stored, or how the values, sorry, are stored in memory. Stacks and queues are more to do with how the programmer accesses that memory. Stacks and queues can be implemented in different ways. Uh, some of them will use arrays, some of them will use linked lists. The programmer doesn't really care. As far as they're concerned, they're working with a stack or a queue, not an array or a linked list. The stack or the, or the queue is like a level above an array or a linked list that just controls how it is used. A stack is a first in, last out, or last in, first out collection data type. So where with an array or a linked list, we can access any of the items. If you're using a stack, you can only access the top item. So if, for example, we wanted to add a value to the stack, let's add A, we have to push it onto the stack. That's the terminology that we use. It's just adding it to the collection. Um, and now let's add a B, and we see that goes on top. And a C, that's a V. A C goes on top of that. Now, if we want to take a value off of the stack, we can pop it. And this will get the top item. The last in is the first out. And that's how we access the C. Currently, we cannot access the A. You only use a stack when you don't need to access items further down. We can only access the top item. We don't have to remove it from the stack. We can just have a peek, and this will show us the top value, or we can pop it to take it off. Stacks are extremely common in computing. For example, if you want to call a function, the computer will make use of the call stack to keep track of what values a variable should hold in different scopes of the program. Another common use of stacks is if you want to evaluate an equation, uh, especially a complex equation with lots of different operations uh, that are part of it, the computer will almost always make use of reverse Polish notation, which uses the power of a stack to break it down into smaller equations that it can calculate a lot more easily. Perhaps an easier uh, example to understand would be um, the back button on a web browser. So say for example, we're on the home page of Google and we want to search for YouTube. So let's uh, search YouTube. And once we've searched for YouTube, we can click on the top link, which should hopefully be the actual YouTube site. And then from there, we can search for, I don't know, cat videos. And that will give us a list of videos. And maybe we want to click on cat video one. So if we have a peek at our current uh, window, our current tab, we've currently got a video of a cat, cat video one. If we press the back button in the top left, how do we go back to the previous sites that we've been to? Well, one way we can do that is with a stack, because with a stack, we only care about the last item to go in. So at the moment, uh, we've got the cat video one. If we were to pop this off and then peek at the next value, we have the YouTube search for cat video. So we've gone back a page and we can do that again. Now we're on the YouTube homepage and we can go back again. And now we're on the Google search for YouTube. And then we can go right back to the Google home screen. And this is one example of where a stack might be used. A queue is pretty much the opposite. So instead of being first in last out and last in first out like a stack a queue is first in first out and last in last out
So if we were to add the value a to the q, a goes right down to the bottom, same as before. B goes on top of it like before, and C goes on top of that again. And you see the, the terminology is a bit different for a stack and a queue. In order to add a value to a stack, we had to push. And in order to take, one, uh, take a value off of the stack, we had to pop. With a queue, we use the terminology NQ and DQ. Now, you might see different terminology. Uh, this is the one that I use. I think it's the most common, um, but you might see just add to a queue, remove from a queue, because the fact that it is a queue defines this kind of behavior. But so far, it looks the same as a stack. But if I dequeue or remove from the queue, you'll see that instead of C, instead of taking from the top, we take from the front. And again, this time we'll take B and then C. Queues are also extremely common in computing. So for example, the processor inside of your computer will use a priority queue, which is a type of queue that does a bit of sorting so that it can prioritize certain tasks. And this is how it organizes tasks. So uh, a task of, uh, two tasks of equivalent priority will be executed by the processor in the order that they were like initiated. But they can't all happen instantly, so they need to be stored in a queue. Another example of a queue might be uh, if you've ever had a, an old phone or laptop and you've started typing and realized that it hasn't shown anything on the screen yet, only for it to uh, everything you've typed to appear in quick succession. This is called a keyboard buffer, and a keyboard buffer uses um, a queue under the hood. So for example, if we were to type hello all at once, but the system is currently very slow, it hasn't processed anything that's been typed yet. Okay, now the uh, system has unfreezed itself, it can actually start to look at what has actually just been typed. So we have a H, an E, an L, an L, and an O. And that's kind of how a queue works um, and an example of where it might be used. Stacks and queues may just seem like a more restrictive version of an array or a linked list. Why would I use a stack that can only access one element instead of a linked list where I can access any element that I want? Well, that's kind of true, but depending on your situation, uh, it might be more efficient, more performant to use a stack because stacks are optimized to only access the top element. Every element underneath doesn't need to be accessed and you can leverage that to squeeze out a bit of performance. You can also make your code more readable. So for example, if I'm implementing a stack by hand um, and another programmer looks at my code and they don't know that I'm using a stack, they'll have to read every little detail to see what I'm trying to do. And that can be quite complex. Most programmers know what stacks and queues are. So if I just say that I'm using a, a stack now, or even just call my array stack and access it in a certain way, another programmer that's looking at my stack or a queue can see that I'm using a stack or a queue and they don't have to look into a lot of detail about how I'm doing certain operations. They can just say, okay, that's a stack. I understand what's going on. Now I can move on. That's been stacks and queues. The next video will be about graphs and trees.